All right, welcome back to the channel. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by. Glad to have you, and uh, it's good to see you again. So today we're going to talk about stropping, right? Uh, stropping is not the same as sharpening your blade. You need to properly strop a sharp blade to keep it sharp as you use it. So if you carve for roughly 30 minutes, you should stop and strop 10 times maybe around there. That's a good ballpark figure. The thing about stropping is that it is a companion hobby, a sister hobby to wood carving. You've got to develop the skill, and if you don't, you're not going to be successful as a carver, unless you've got someone else who's going to follow you around and strop your blades for you. Um, using blades that don't require stropping is an option, but the better option is just getting a hold of this, learning how to do it properly, spending the time, and developing that skill. So we're going to use today a leather strop like I have here. This is the one that I used before I got a, uh, a power strop, and I used the heck out of it many times. I also used it to strop a uh, gouge and a V-tool that I was using as I was, when I was new. And I'm going to show you how I did that as well. We'll go over all of that. So we're going to go ahead and flip the camera around right here to the desktop, and uh, we'll get started on things. Sound good? All right, so we're just going to go over the basics of stropping in this video. So I'm going to talk for a moment here about stropping compounds, and I've got a couple to go over with you here right now when i first started stropping i thought i was going to go ahead and get myself this sharp ball stick and uh, use this stropping compound and i thought it was going to work fantastic and i got a picture of the box right here this is the box it came in the problem is that this is about 13,000 14,000 grit which is very low it's for a very fine strop so it takes a lot longer to get where i need to go right and i have found through personal experience that about four to six thousand Three to six thousand around there that works a lot better and that's about what the uh, yellow stropping compound is from flex cut so i highly recommend flex cut stropping compound or the beaver craft stropping compound which looks like this right here and they're both like a crayon like consistency right and uh, the way you use it is just by rubbing it in to a leather strop and getting it pushed into the grain about like so and then you can start using the strop. Now a strop is just a piece of wood with a piece of leather glued or affixed to it. Now <clears throat> this piece of leather is just regular rawhide that I bought from a local leather shop and I glued it with the smooth side down and the rough side up on the strop. And you can do it this way or you can look over here, you can Google on Amazon and you'll find leather strops of all kinds of variety. And those are all well and good. Or, not the other way, you can go over to Dwayne Gosnell's site, and he's got one that's for sale that's a bit cheaper. And it looks like his might be made of suede. And I'm not sure, but I think suede is a better leather for making a strop out of. Um, when I was talking to Joe Schumacher, my local carving club, he's a former CCA member, CCA member emeritus, and he stated that suede was absolutely the best material to make a strop out of. That was before I had made my strop and was using my strop consistently. But whether you do that or whether you use leather, it doesn't really matter that much, uh, especially when you're new. As you progress in this, because this, this is going to be a hobby in and of itself, as you progress in this, you're going to learn more about what you're supposed to do, but more about what it takes to get your knife sharp. So I encourage you not just to take what I'm saying as, uh, the, as the, the Bible truth. Take your time. Learn things. Spend time investing in research and uh, what's working best and pay attention to what you're stropping and uh, what the results are as you do that, right? So, like I said, I would suggest starting with Beavercraft or FlexCut stropping compound. Those are easy wins. Um, this strop is already loaded up with the FlexCut gold. Um, it had originally on there the uh, sharp all green that I used to use, but now we're gonna look at stropping this knife, okay? The first knife we're gonna look at here is a Beckwith Forge knife I have. And if you look, it's got a nice thick spine here, but it also has a flat bevel, right? You can see right down that bevel in a straight line as I turn that knife. And with a, a, a flat knife with a flat bevel, this is what, probably the easiest knife to strop. So we're gonna start by plating it flat on that blade, right? And the, the cutting edge is to the back side of where we're moving. We're moving in this direction here. So we're gonna put it down and then we're just gonna bring it across, straight across like that, and then do it again. And that's what we're gonna do several times as we strop this knife. 
and it takes time. But in doing this, technique is of supreme importance because you don't want to roll the blade. Now, what do I mean by rolling the blade? As you strop along the surface, you're bringing that trailing edge of the blade along, right? What some folks do when they're new is they'll start to turn the knife and they bring it up, bringing that cutting edge against the grain of the strop and dulling it. It's kind of like taking two steps backwards and one step forward, right? That's going to limit how sharp you can get your knife and you want to get it nice and sharp. So rather than do that, what I've seen in a, uh, a video by Blake Lunsford was he showed a technique where you drop in one direction and then you stop. And right in this point, you rotate the knife on the spine to the other side and then strop in this direction. And then you're doing both directions at once, but you're also developing good form and ensuring that you don't rotate on that blade, that you don't rotate and dull your knife, rolling that edge over as you come up. Because people have a habit of stropping this way and then rotating that knife on the leather and dulling that blade as they do so. So that's what we want to avoid, right? And like I said, this flat grind, flat blade is probably the easiest thing to strop that I have. Now, next I would like to look at this flex cut knife. Because a lot of people that are newer are going to have a flex cut knife. And flex cut are very solid blades. But this blade, nice thin, but it also has a bevel. So it's got that first section where it's flat steel. And then the bevel is down here. Now that bevel, that's what we're trying to lay against the flat of the leather. So when we lay this one down, you can get the right angle to show you, right? We lay it down flat in the, on the blade, but then we got to pivot it up a little bit. Just a small turn to make it to where that blade is flat against there. That's the trailing side of the blade that is in the back edge right here. So I lay it down flat and then I put it right up against that bevel, which rotates that knife blade just a little bit. Okay, so we're going to zoom in a bit here. All right? So I lay it flat in the blade. I rotate it. You see the light reflecting off as I rotate right to that bevel and then bring it smooth, okay? Do the same thing. I do this a few times. And as I do that, you may notice that the leather is getting darker in the area that I've been stropping, right? It's starting to get a little black. The blackness that you see, that's the metal coming off of the blade. That's a good sign. That's a sign that our stropping is working and that we're sharpening or honing our knife, not sharpening. Sharpening is a different process. Sharpening is what you do on stones, diamond plates. This is simply honing the blade. We're just honing it and bringing that sharpness. Now, that blade is much sharper than it was already. Easy to feel, right? Now, what happens as you do this is you, you burn and burnish a little bit of metal off of one side. But as you do that, you can create a burr on this side because it pushes up against that blade, that, that angle right there, right? And it can roll or fold over a little bit of metal. And then you'll have a burr on the opposite side from which you stropped. Once you get that burr, you get to strop that burr off. So as you get done, let's say you do 10 times in one direction. So let's say you do 10 times in one direction. Like so. And then when you get to the end, you do 10 times in one other direction. Right? But then before you get done, you start doing once this direction, once in this direction, once in this direction, back and forth to knock that burr off nice and gentle. Right? Now, again, this is not to get really in depth on how to get a perfectly sharp knife. We're getting a good sharp knife here. We're maintaining that blade and making it sharp enough to carve with quite easily. We can cut paper with this real easy. But <clears throat> there are ways of getting even more 
honed, even sharper. And that's going to do with stropping compounds that aren't necessarily compounds. They're stropping paste, and there's there's all kinds of things you can get really in-depth. And it's Like I said, it, it's a hobby in and of itself if you really get into this. Now, this is an upsweep blade, right? So the blade curves upward. On this one, you gotta, you're you going to strop a little bit different, right? So we want to strop on that, that, that sharp edge to be trailing again, right? But as we do that, we can bring it down, right? Or bring it around. Try to get that whole blade. You can do it at an angle if you want to. Or you can do it straight along this edge of the blade here. But then you still gotta get that other edge, right? And so you can bring it at an angle here and hold it down and come this way with it too. And I've seen a lot of good success at sharpening that tip by doing it at an angle here. And then by doing the base of that right here, and then back to the other side. And then that tip trailing as well. Right? And that kind of thing right there. Really that's nice and sharp. That's fantastic. So those are the three types of blades. I wanted to show you real fast on those, right? Alright, so when I first started carving, all I had for other tools was this U gouge from Stree, right? And it's just a uh probably about six, six or an eight. I don't know. Stree didn't really label them right when I bought this and it's not the best crafted tool but it was a u-gouge it didn't cost me that much and I got it on Etsy and then I got a v-gouge from uh, flex cut it's that flex cut logo right there and I hate that polished finish they have on there so I sanded all that off and just put a little stain on it now so how do I sharpen these blades how do I maintain or hone these blades on this drop the same way right now you can do it on the front here and this is a rounded gouge right so you can see that rounded bevel right you can just bring it here and rock it sort of on that gouge or here's the other option flip this bad boy over carve a nice thick channel using the gouge and then rub your honing compound through there and then you simply pull it along that channel and this is what I did to sharpen up my U-gouge. I would just use the back of this board, carve a channel here, and I would sharpen it up like so. And you can probably already see it's getting quite a bit darker as I go. And it's just honing that blade. And how do I know it's the right diameter for this gouge? Because I use this gouge to make that channel right? That's already a good bit sharper. Now we can do the same thing with this V gouge, right? We can just carve into it, make it a little channel. Let's get deeper and get deeper and get deeper, deeper, right? So you can do this several times, getting deeper with each pull. And that'll help you get that V right there, right? And then you gotta get your stropping compound in there. So I'm using that flex cut gold here. And I'm pushing it down into that channel. Like so. Now I can take that V. Remember? Trailing edge, right? The sharp edge is going behind. We can just Pull it through there, like so. That'll get that bottom of the V real good for you, real sharp. So the other part of the V is that it's really two blades, one on the left and one on the right. And it's much, it's, it's a lot easier to sharpen a V on a regular strop than it is a U-gouge. U-gouge, you definitely need to use that channel. But a V, because it's got a flat blade there and a flat blade there, you can just lay it here, flat, find that bevel, and then drag it straight. Same thing, find that bevel, drag it straight. And you can do this several times to 
sharpen it up. I'll rotate to the other side. And there we go. And you can see it's starting to create that black mark there where I'm removing the steel here, right? We talked about creating that bevel. And how do we remove that bevel now in this? So you can try to use it right here in the corner, or if you have extra leather, which I still happen to have, you can remove that bevel with this. And here's what I have done in the past. I have just pushed that leather up in there, and I just bring it along. So, is that the best use of this? Maybe not. I'll tell you right now, that is much sharper than it was before. And <clears throat> there's a saying, a man with an experience is never at the mercy of a man with a theory, right? Someone tells me, I don't think it works well that way. That's all well and good. I just tested it, and it certainly worked out well for me. So, that's the other part. Now, <clears throat> outside of this strop that we've used and that I've showed you how to use, you don't have to only use a leather strop. I have seen people strop with a piece of MDF board and just putting stropping compound flat on it. I have seen some older carvers strop with just a piece of cardboard, an old cereal box that they had cut and they had glued down to a piece of wood and then were just stropping on that. So, at any rate, I hope this helped. I hope the information I supplied to you here will benefit you in some way. And uh, if it does, leave a leave a comment down below. And thank you so much for your time. And that's the end of the video. So I really hope you guys learned something. I hope I gave some information to somebody they could use. And uh, don't forget to click the links down and do blue down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And uh, yeah, don't forget to hit this link right here. This one right there. That one. Click that. Click that video. Watch that video next. All right. Sounds good. Have fun, guys. Bye.